Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In the last episode, I showed you the W shadow warning that you can enable with Clang and GCC definitely, and there's probably something similar for Visual Studio. And you may have wondered while watching that video, well, how in the world do I find the warnings that exist and determine which ones are actually going to be useful to me. So I have brought back up this example, which is uh, summing a range of integers and doing a multiplication down here and adding some values in and returning it all from the simple function. And it's a version of what we were showing in the last episode, but slightly tweaked a little bit to have a few more things in it. Now at the moment, I have no warnings enabled and the compiler is generating no warnings. Now to be clear, there are some warnings that all compilers will generate even if you have warnings disabled, but I'm not going to talk about those at the moment. Right now, I'm going to talk about the discoverability of warnings. How do I find which warnings would be useful to me in my code? Clang and Visual Studio both have an option for this. So since I'm in the Compiler Explorer, I'm going to go ahead and add a Visual Studio compilation as well. I'm going to go with the latest available build of Visual Studio 2019 with the 64-bit compiler. Now the standard that I am using is meaningless here. I'm just going to go ahead and remove that bit. And I am going to turn on the output window here. And get everything nice and lined up. So I have this code. I know that it generates many warnings, but it can generate many warnings, but we don't currently have any warnings demonstrated. So I'm going to turn on W all with Visual Studio and I'm going to turn on W everything with Clang. Now, neither one of these options is actually recommended by the compiler writers, but what they give us is a way to discover warnings. So I have here a declaration shadows a local parameter, dash W shadow, an implicit conversion changes signedness, int to unsigned, ooh, that's a good one right here, I'm doing an int to an unsigned int. Now what happens if I decrement an unsigned int and I look for it to be greater than zero? It's always going to be greater than zero. Implicit conversion it turns floating point number into integer. And then we get into a few things like C++ 98 requires a new line at the end of the file. Well, I'm not programming in C++ 98. I'm compiling in C++ 17. So that doesn't really matter to me here. And in Visual Studio, we get similar things. Declaration of I hides a previous local declaration. See declaration of I on previous line. Initializing conversion of int to unsigned int. And return conversion of double to int possible loss of data. So they all give us the exact same interesting, useful warnings. So I know that I want to go back in in my code with Clang and enable W shadow. And I almost certainly want to enable warnings for sign conversions and for float conversions, w sign conversion, w float conversion. And with Visual Studio, I want to enable warnings 4456, 4365, and 4244. These are all clearly very useful warnings. So I'm going to go ahead and say, you are right. I want to do the correct things with these values. Now, if I actually wanted to do this plus i down here, which is the initial param value, or it's going to be, actually, it's going to be zero since I'm counting down like this. Um, then I've got questions about the actual meaning of my code here, but let's just say that I really wanted to do a times two, so I take away the times 2.0 so that I don't get that floating point conversion and get rid of this shadowing variable here. And now I have no warnings being generated with all warnings turned on in Visual Studio, and the only warnings that I have left with Clang are the ones with C++ 98 compatibility, missing prototypes, things that we don't care about at the moment in this code. So there you go, W all, W everything, handy ways of discovering warnings in your code. Should you compile all the time with these enabled? Probably not. But should you use them to discover new warnings in your code and then roll those back into your build system? Absolutely. So thank you for watching this episode of C++ Weekly.